2009, Michelle McCool started to use a new finisher, which she calls the Faith Breaker. You might be thinking, hey, that looks very familiar. And you'd be right to think that, as the Faith Breaker was merely a Styles Clash, the finishing maneuver used and innovated by the phenomenal During the time McCool was using the Faith Breaker, Styles was one of the top stars in TNA, now known as Impact Wrestling. And contrary to what you might have expected, Styles had no problem with her using the move. In fact, he was McCool with it. I'm, I'm sorry, I had to. The pun was right there. McCool continued to use the move for a couple of years until her retirement in 2011. When you think of Seth Rollins' finisher, you think of his deadly curb stomp. Or simply, stomp. Stop! 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 We're shortening the names of finishers now? However, back when he joined the Authority... Oh my god! I can't believe you've done this. He started to use Triple H's pedigree as his finishing maneuver. The actual reason for this was because Vince McMahon banned the curb stomp in 2015, as he thought the move could be easily imitated by little kids. So instead, Rollins used the same move that won Triple H most of his 14 world titles, and he even slayed the king himself with his own finishing move. Orton's legendary RKO finishing move is a modified version of DDP's finishing move, the Diamond Cutter. Or in the words of AJ Styles, a knockoff diamond cutter. Having said that, Orton turned the move into the most destructive three letters in sports entertainment. And not to forget all the memes it has created, like this. And this. While it may be argued that the RKO was just a glorified diamond cutter, Orton made it his own and won 13 world championships courtesy of it. Still, to this day, the Viper continues to strike from out of nowhere. No one is safe from the RKO, man or woman, or even plain. The super kick was, of course, made popular by the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, it should be me. who used it to put away many of his opponents and win championship gold. Since then, the move has lost its effectiveness over the years, and that's due to the fact that it's used in pretty much every wrestler's arsenal, including that of the show-off Dolph Ziggler. Don't get me wrong, the move is still great to watch, but it doesn't quite get the same level of reaction back when Michaels used it. Ziggler has often been viewed as a modern day Shawn Michaels, and with him now using the super kick in his repertoire, you wonder why. In a recent episode of SmackDown Live, Ziggler confronted the Heartbreak Kid and gave him a taste of his own medicine, but only after Michaels completely owned him first. What's more embarrassing to me is working your whole career and still left with nothing except being known as a second-rate Shawn Michaels wannabe. <laughs> The Stunner is one of the most iconic finishing moves in WWE history, made famous by Stone Cold Steve Austin. The Rattlesnake used the Stunner to raise hell on a number of people, especially the chairman, Vince McMahon, what the fuck is that? and his son, Shane, who is still the recipient of the odd Stunner to this day. But not by Stone Cold Steve Austin, but instead, by Kevin Owens. It should have been me. With a new and outspoken attitude. Cut his mic off. There we go. 
Hey, guess what, idiot? Oh There's more than one microphone. KO has now adopted the stunner as his finishing move and is using it to wreak havoc on the McMahon family, namely Shane. Owens stunning his boss got the approval of the Rattlesnake and as Austin tweeted, somebody's gotta do it.